Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Sorry, what happened in the last stream? I was just not sure. I was just commentating, and all of a sudden, things went. It just ended. The stream ended. So I'm back, and I hope everything is good now. So uh, let's continue with the game. We left it off at this point. I know all of you are saying art of ending stream and all, but uh, nothing like that. So we were talking about queen g7 in this position, correct? And then we saw that bishop e8 hits here. So Surya went queen f7, which was the most expected move in the game. And after queen f7, he went rook d6. And rook d6, his plan is that in this position to play bishop e6 and rook d7. So when he played queen e7, bishop e6, now rook d7 is a massive threat. Rook takes f4. And what is the move here? <coughs> yeah, all good, all good guys. No issues. I don't know, something just when I check the stream. It just ended somehow the stream. So rook f4 and now yes Priyanshu single rook d7 wins the queen. Satvik, Trivedi, Belligerant, Jyotin Jai, Atharva, Josuke, uh, no not Josuke, Abhimanyu, SB Blade well done. So rook, v, rook d7 he went here he took takes and now bishop c8 rook went to d6 and g4 arjun is so accurate you know he's just methodically killing everything in black's position very good amazing play knight c4 and now you can take gh5 perhaps he will go g5 then i can enter here so in that way, if Arjun wins this, he will cross 2650. It's amazing. Let's have a look at the other games because Arjun is winning now. Go to the game of Fabiano versus Anish. Our first Magnus after a4 rook fd8 was played by Richard. So Magnus said thank you for the free pawn. Rook b4. He moved his queen. Knight b6. A5. Queen to a7. Queen e3. Bishop e7. And now Magnus is thinking. Rook c c2 he has played. But guys, this is over. Game over. Knight move. Ah, knight can go to c8, but then rook c8. Anna. Stake. Queen is hanging. And if you take my queen, I will first give you a check. And then I'll take piece up. It's just, it's just over. Magnus now joins the leaders after this win. Let's also look at the game of Karuana and Anish. So we had looked till F5. He had taken queen f3, knight c5, he took, bishop takes, d4, bishop e7, bishop h3, g6, and always g6 we spoke is met with g4.
g5 attacks the queen and also this is hanging all of a sudden anish in big trouble let's say you go queen d8 take take i take this or should i go knight g4 white is having a great look at this bishop you talk to that bishop bishop like are yaar apna zindagi pura kharab ho gaya hai yahan pe what is going to hurt anish a lot here is the fact that he was totally better it was not even like a position which was double edged he was just like better in a big way here and if he would have just taken this now i'm sure he would have got a big advantage after this i mean he would have won this game for sure because keeping this bishop didn't help him in any way keeping this knight helped white get f4 f5 So we have a few results. Dubo versus Esipenko ended in a draw. So Esipenko managed to hold this game. He was slightly worse somewhere. <coughs> Babediaro of Grandelius drew. With it drew with Duda. Karuana Giri. Karuana is slightly better after he got a very bad position. Pragnananda drew with Shankland already. Very theoretical game, but good result for Prag. and seems like sergey has a very good position pawn up and he can press endlessly here he can take back with the g h pawn he can also take with the knight but he has an extra pawn here after 44 moves have you ever played a game where all your eight pawns are on the board this might be very rare by the way it seems like magnus carlson has just won his game it seems to be or what so after rook c2 he went bishop g5 queen c5 bishop e7 he took on b6 queen a2 and queen e7 is played queen c2 is not resigned yet now queen d8 he gets 7 can we go b7 with the idea of b8 I think it should win the main point is that this pawn might be one point here but after one square it converts it to nine points so in a way let's say you try to stop the pawn like this then let's say i go right f1 <coughs> so you have like a rook for two pieces but this pawn is not just a pawn and if you give this up then you will be a complete piece down right so then white will win so magnus is going to win this so very interesting is the game between karuana and adish after g5 queen a7 karuana should have got knight g4 or queen f4 but he makes a mistake with bishop c8 and now anish fights the best move fe3 suddenly anish is back in the game because if you save this bishop 
then bishop g5 this game has been very topsy turvy right i was thinking anish will lose but now all of a sudden he's back he has 2 minutes on the clock 9 minute 9 moves to be made <coughs> fabiano has 7 minutes on the clock so how how do we save it first of all your this is hanging correct the bishop so let's say you decide to go back maybe to h3 then i play knight c4 i attack your bishop i save my pawn let's say you save your bishop bishop c3 then i take this now all of a sudden it's black who has great position because he has this e3 pawn well covered his pieces are very active it looks great <coughs> so not easy for fabi to decide what to do oh okay can you do like e6 because if i play rook c8 there is queen f7 which is very powerful so i mean it's it's over right after that queen f7 king here and bishop a3 or g takes h6 with the idea of mate so <coughs> bishop a3 coming up there in that line so you have to play bishop g5 queen f7 queen f7 king f e f7 king f7 bishop b7 rook d8 bishop c6 knight c4 and your well anything can happen it's not not at all clear so fabiano thinking he has 5 minutes on the clock knight moves to make <coughs> Gaguli has just resigned his game, which means Arjun wins. We were we were on knight c4. He took no g g h5. Did he take or what? Yeah, he took back g h g h. Bishop e6. Here, king g7. F4. Knight d2. F5. Rook e6. F e6. Knight e4. Queen h5. Knight g5, queen d8, king f7, queen d7, and here he resigned because this is hanging, this is hanging, this is hanging. I mean everything will fall, and so Arjun moves to five and half out of six. Amazing! It's crazy, crazy. Guys, in the in the master section, we are on the game of Anish versus Fabi, and uh, there are three leaders now. with uh, <coughs> vidit mamedyarov and kalsan all three on four out of six rapport lost to magnus and lost his lead uh, arjun is sixth in the world juniors by the time the tournament ends he might replace the hal's position possible alila it's very much possible because arjun is playing so well and somehow if he manages to score like 10 or 11 out of 13 which generally could happen in challengers then he might gain like already 25 30 low points and could surpass even dihal become or even narayanan and become india number uh four after vidit uh, after anand vidit and hari krishna Yeah, let's change the small board, but to keep it on what? Let's remove it for now. Yeah. Let's put Karyakin's game there. That beautiful game with so many, uh, so many pods. Okay, let's. that's karyakin's game <laughs> but he's played what did he play bishop h3 or what no he played e6 he did play e6 fabi did go e6 and no uh, anish took on g5 very good pratham nayak arjun on fire eight indians in top 100 now anand vidit hari krishna narayanan nihal arjun shashikiran and adiban wow so we have anand from tamil nadu 
Vidit from Maharashtra, Hari Krishna from you can say Andhra Pradesh. He lives in uh, now in Prague, but originally from Andhra Pradesh. S L Narayanan from Kerala, Nihal from Kerala, Arjun from Telangana, Shashi Kiran from Tamil Nadu, Adiban from Tamil Nadu. So lot of players from <coughs> Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, that region. <laughs> it's true that chess in north india has to has to improve more people have to take up the sport there more things have to happen there for sure arjun is 2651.4 wow amazing So here after bishop g5 he played bishop d7 which was a not a good move. He took bishop e6 and now all of a sudden Anish is better. Guys if you look at it Anish has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pawns and Fabi has only 1, 2, 3, 4 pawns. So even though Anish is an exchange down he has 2 pawns and his knight is coming on this beautiful square. So if Fabi cannot checkmate somehow the black king, it will be tough. And also there is no way because this bishop is excellent. Can we try and push this bishop away like this? Because then at least we can win this pawn, right? Which is important. C4, hitting here and here. And if you go here, then knight d2, fork. So... Would become very nasty. Oh, tomorrow is Pragnananda versus Magnus. Wow, that is great. Why is black bishop excellent? Uh, Manan, this bishop is beautiful, right? Because it controls this pawn and it also controls the f6 square. This bishop is bad, but I think he, it can always try to exchange out itself with bishop g8. Karthik says this will be second time in one year that Anish beats Fabi with black if he does. Yeah, true. But seeing that so many flips have happened in this game, I'm not so sure. Also with the fact that six more moves have to be made and both players have only two minutes on the clock, anything can happen. So with it drew today, Prag drew against Shankland, with it drew against Duda, Arjun beat Surya, Magnus beat Rapport, and uh, this is Fabi versus Anish. Now Fabiano thinking what to do here, his position is very difficult in a way. Can, can he go like Bishop C1 with the idea of taking here, but then the knight jumps to C4, defending this pawn. a3 okay what about here he wants to go bishop c5 but then i can just move my queen right to c7 so knight c4 bishop c5 queen c7 what's your plan spawn is massive Next move maybe rookie 8 incoming. This has happened. He played knight c4, bishop c5 has happened. Anish is thinking for his move. It's the 36th move. Vidai Kumar says, Sagar, while listening to your commentary makes weekend parties sound boring. Okay. <laughs> nice. Also cost effective, yeah? Vidai, sitting at home listening to commentary, not have to pay anything for the party. Okay, queen c7. Come 
Come on, Anish. You have one minute fifty seconds. Fami has two minutes twenty eight seconds. The way this game has flipped from one side to another has been simply epic. Will Arjun be in Masters next? If he wins the challengers, yes. And at this point, it looks very likely that he will win. But if you think about it, it's a thirteen-round event, and we have only completed six rounds. Queen G seven. Why did Adish not like? What was the reason why he would have not played Queen C seven? It looks the most natural, right? Maybe. He wanted rook f eight, but anyway, that square is controlled, so you can't play it. Anyway, it's not a bad move or anything, but it's just a little surprising that he didn't go for queen c seven. What does white? I think white can go rook b one. Oh, but rook b one there is knight d two. You know this? These pieces are so well positioned. Knight c four and bishop g five, both of them. Rohit B says, "What do you think would have been Arjun's score if he played the Masters instead of Challengers?" Can't say. And in Masters, somehow, you know, if you look at Arjun's game, many of his opponents have made quite big errors, you know, blunders. And generally, in Masters section, this does not happen. So, like Prang is right now fighting hard, I'm sure Arjun would also have a tough time in the Masters section because they are all very strong players. But he could. He could have been unbeaten there, and he could have played very well. You you can't say what would have happened. Thirty six moves have been over. Four more moves to go. Fabiano down to one minute on his clock. What should you do next here as White? I can't see moves. I want to go rook f one. There is ninety two. I want to go rook b one. There is ninety two. Maybe bishop. I want to go here with knight. Bishop, he finds the knight takes it. What does white play? Where does he go? Maybe rook e two. I don't know. Queen g four. He played. Can Anish get his rook in the game? But if he plays rook e eight, I'm a bit worried about rook bishop d seven. But then there is rook e four. So perhaps rook e eight is Anish's move here. I think he will do it. Or do you want to play knight d two to e four? Also possible. Knight d two, h four, knight e four with the idea of knight f two. Both players down to one minute. On the small board, we have Karyakin's game against Jordan. Because that's the only game that seems to be going apart from this. Bishop f six. Uh huh. But now rook b one, no? Getting the rook in, trying for getting the rook in the game. But yeah, I mean bishop f six. This is plan. This is not hanging. So, because this is protected twice, d four. So why bishop f six? Maybe he wants to play h five next. Rook b one, good move by Karuana. Can we go h five? Queen g three. And then if I take here, uh, rook b eight is game over. Take here, take here, mate. This is a threat. Suddenly, now, what does Adish do? He goes g five. Okay, got it. I mean, after queen g three, this was a threat. Not here. G five. Good move. 
and now Karuana has to play bishop f5. This is he can fight because bishop e4 is such a huge threat uh, or such makes the bishop active. So you want to play bishop. So Anish's idea, by the way, of playing bishop f6 was to activate his other bishop, which was quite dormant for a while, which now makes sense. Rook b1, g5. Yes, Mithilesh Nayak rerouting the knight from to e4 via d2 would have been very good. This. Bishop f5, good move. Happy plays it. A 39 moves and now take. I think that would be queen f5 and rook e8. And then we would have made it till the 40th move when Anish would be exchanged down but has a powerful pawn on e3 and good chances in the game. Arjun what? Kiran Rajpurohit. Arjun what? Vidit Drew. Plays rookie 8. And according to the engines, this is a mistake because white can play queen h5 here with the idea of hitting here. But I don't think it's a possible move to find. Rook b6 plunder. What? Really? I think it's a error, no transmission error. Because it just loses the what? What he forgot? 40th move, what a big plunder. He just gave up a piece. He just gave up. And guys, the point is not even that you just gave up your rook. Because after this, this, and this, it's like you are three pawns down. It's over. Queen e4 check is coming. What? Did Fabi just really play rook b6? Fabi resigned. What? <laughs> what? Unbelievable turn of events. This game should be given the award for the game with... No, no, he didn't resign. He played bishop b6. But... What? It's over. Just take here. Take here and take here. No, but the result has not come yet. Or he resigned. I can't believe. I can't believe he played this. Maybe it's just complete blind spot. A Karuana has this issue of time pressure. Yeah, sometimes he doesn't play well under time pressure. Yeah, he hasn't resigned. But what is there to play now? I mean, Anish has 50 more minutes. Of course, he will not uh, fall for this. Uh, I mean, of course, this is hanging. This is not even hanging. Bishop d4, queen is defending. So, he will definitely deflect the queen. Take this and take this. Check me the year. Can't believe it. Okay, Sergey Karyakin versus the thing which the thing which makes this game unbelievable for me is the fact that White it has 48th move. White has all the pots. How do you exchange so many pieces with all the pawns on the board? No, 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 Paul exchange in a key. Yeah. Look, so many times he had Opa saw here, he could have taken here. He was like, no, today we are not exchanging pawns. Pawn exchanging not allowed. Crazy <laughs> game. Now he's going like this, this, and we'll play a5.
नाइट एफ एट इधर इधर से ऐसे 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 एंड पुश देन यू प्ले दैट एंड गेम फॉर अनदर हंड्रेड मूव बट ओके व्हाइट विल विन दिस सर गेम विल विन फॉर श्योर वॉट इज अनिश थिंकिंग नाउ आई थिंक अनिश इज एंजॉइंग हिमसेल्फ ही लाइक यू नो ही डज दिस मेनी टाइम्स पुट्स लाइक एवरीथिंग देन एडजस्ट इज पीसेस एंड ऑल so all the people who have just joined in i think this game we will get over in a few minutes but i just wanted to give you a small update so vidit gujarati is still leading the tournament he is on four points and today by the way this is a small round up today playing with white he got a good position against duda but duda was well prepared if you look at the time this was all preparation from duda's end 143 this 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 all prep all prep all prep prep so the first move after 26 moves the first time he thought rook c5 and then with it had two pieces for rook but he had to give it back he was a pawn down but his c pawn was strong and the black king was weak so they got into this and in the end they drew the game okay so that is how uh, this game happened and uh, then with it drew pragnananda's game against sam shanklin was shweshniko <laughs> and once again a uh, very successful game for prag because sam who came well prepared to this game and had like 146 here couldn't get any advantage in spite of having so much time and in the end they, he drew so prag got a nice draw here magnus carlson actually managed to win his game and it was in this position that he unleashed a new idea bishop e3 in the catalan and then uh, well duda had a i mean the rapport had a decent position it was not like he was worse or anything but here i think he shouldn't have taken on f3 he should have played bishop d5 and the position was quite complicated but i mean the main point is that after bishop d5 if you play rook d take c5 i will take and you take here i have rook a and you will anyway lose this exchange so you can't take here and black is doing well but he took and then what happened was this move rook a2 and then he slowly started pushing his a pawn and rapport plundered is i mean gave up his d4 pawn he then uh, just lost the game without too much of a fight so he resigned here magnus won Shakriar Mamedyarov versus Nils Grandelius was hardly a fight in the Yeah they drew here Dubo versus Esipenko also draw again in the Dubo played this Catalan It's uh, dangerous to play against Dubo yeah Catalan hits all his world championship prep but Esipenko is like how does it better for this i mean dubo was better but i think dubo is not at his best touch in this event so the game ended in a uh, draw and then uh, the most exciting game of today i would say staker on d4 uh, look at this okay this game just nf3 d5 karuada plays b3 adish really plays well in the opening beautiful chess by the way against b3 this is a very good weapon that he showed knight d7 queen b6 rook here bishop c5 
So E5 was a move that Adiba did like as he came on the chat and said you should be blocking your bishop here. And then Queen D8, Knight C7, B5. Already you could sense that White was in trouble because Black created a weakness here. Then he was getting his Knight here, Knight here. Bishop could move and C5, C4 with this Bishop activating. So Black had a great position. And then here, yeah, this was the moment where Anish should have taken on E3 and played C5. And he would have been a, in a very good position. But he went back, F4, Queen D7, F5. And at this point, it White had taken over. And Fabi had a great position here. Bishop H3, G6. Look at this bishop. And he also played G4. Then he played F4 here, G5. Queen mood and now if he had got knight g4 he would have had such a great position like you know knight g4 bishop here and now bishop c1 with the idea of taking this pawn bishop takes and then dark squares are terribly weak this bishop is really bad but he went bishop c8 fe3 e6 he took and now queen f7 you have to go into this end game but rather he played bishop d7 and now it was anish who got the advantage because his knight sat here bishop here queen here and then at this point, we were thinking like rook b1, this was the 40th move. And I was like, oh, it's going to be a long game because here he will play queen h5. Okay, queen h5 was equalizing, but something else. He might take on h7 or something. And then he suddenly plays rook b6, 40th move. And then Anish just takes it. Take, take. And now we are into this position with two extra pawns for white, for black. There's so many ways to win. And so this is done. And then uh, let's look at challenger section because the biggest game there was Arjun playing against Surya. Arjun with white played this line in the Italian where you play early d4. And uh, Surya played instead of bishop g4 f6 after 5 minutes of thought. I don't know if it was his prep but should be most likely. Take, take, rook d8. Perhaps knight e7 with the idea of c6 was more accurate. Rook d8, bishop e2, knight f5, a4, c6. And now Arjun <coughs> was starting to get a bit of pressure here in the position. He avoided queen trade. Then he pushed the queen back. Then he brought, no, not queen e4, sorry. Queen f5. Bishop went here, queen f6. Bishop f4. Bishop d7, he took, now rook e6, queen of 7 rook d6, what a nice move. Queen e7, bishop e6, idea rook d7, he took rook d7, he, he won the queen. I mean a brilliant game, actually this game, no mistakes by Arjun, what a game, really. And then he was having queen for two pieces and then he just chopped every pawn here, I mean he's just winning, so Surya resigned. And Arjun moves to 5 and half out of 6. He's crossed 2650. Like on fire. So. <clears throat> Shaibi says. Karuana played rook b6. And Anish looked at him in surprise. The expression was precious. Oh my god what a blunder. Don't know what was going through Fabi's mind. Yeah. Yeah I think. Sometimes it happens with Karuana, yeah? Oh, what else now? The game might go on for a few more moves, but guys, I think the result is not in doubt. Also, Sergey versus Jordan, I don't think the result is in doubt here. Sooner or later, White will break through and Cape will... Game will be won by Sergey. It's a horrible position for Black and for Jordan. It's really difficult. So, guys, I will end the stream now. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, and uh, just so that if you want to see the standings, I can show you if you if you want to wait for a second. I can pull it up. Although not all games are over, but still, I mean, let's let's just get a glimpse of it, no?
so first let me just pull up the challengers here so this is arjun five and a half out of six leading the pack and uh, let me also pull up the master section after this but you know i think arjun now has a what one and a half point lead over the field it's massive arjun is also now 2650 people are saying he's crossed top 100 in the world <laughs> amazing i thought you know arjun is very good at rapid and blitz but here he's showing that he's equally good in classical yeah, this is the masters now. Carlson on four, Vidit on four, Mamediaro on four, Esipenko on three and half, Rapport on three and half, Duda on three. Anish will move to three. Fabiano will be on two and half. Jordan will be on two and half. Dubo will uh Sergey will also move to three. So this is how the standings are. And with regards to the information which you all have been asking me for, let me just tell you this because uh, it will be also of good information for you about the FIDE Grand Prix. Because there is a small update there. So the first one Berlin is happening in... <coughs> Germany in Berlin from 3rd to 17th and uh, look at this this is the pool A B C D so so here it is Let's say uh, what good news which I have to give is that Hari Krishna also got a chance to play in Fide Grand Prix because way he pulled out. Rating wise, Hari Krishna got a chance. Now, you see, Vidit is in pool C, Hari Krishna is in pool D. So, how will it work? 16 players will play, and if Vidit will play against Aronian twice, Dubo twice, and Vincent twice, double round robin, it's called. And if he finishes first in pool C, he goes to the semi-finals. Same way, winner of every pool will go to the semi-finals. So, Hari has a tough pool D because Lanier and Wesley, so both are very strong. <clears throat> Vidit has a very good score with Dubo. So, in a way, Levon is the toughest competitor for Vidit. And it's possible, you know, somehow for Vidit to make it to the semis here. Uh, so, this is about that and then if um, if he wins I mean if two Indians do well then that would be amazing also you know there are points so it's like if you reach the semi-finals you get 10 points if you reach the finals you get 12 if you win it you get 13 if you finish second in your group, you get five. So you have to play one more event. There are totally three events, Berlin, Belgrade, and then one more. And you have to, Vidit and Hari Krishna both are playing in Berlin and Belgrade after this, the next one. So that way they have to score maximum points. Yeah, if you, now, do you understand the format? Srini Ramesh, thank you. Srini Ramaya, thank you for your huge super chat says, Hi Sagar, has Anand kind of semi-retired now? I hardly see him in top tournaments. Thank you. Sort of. I'm not sure if you can call it semi-retired, but he is playing less than before. Also, the COVID situation is such that it's very difficult uh, to play right now. I mean, he played in Baku at the Gashimo Memorial, but he didn't do well. I think he finished last there. Um, maybe he has some tournaments lined up. Uh, in the coming days but also uh, it's very tough phase for him right he has to and in, in the top level chess there is a cutthroat competition where invitation goes to the top players Anand is now world number 16 so of course he as a former world champion he would get invitations but sometimes gets difficult to do that to get invitations as well 
but i am looking forward to him playing more events still and making a comeback last event was tough for him but let's see when we can never write him off he always makes a comeback can uh, no you can't play in all, players can't play in three you have to play in any two AG will play in second and third. VD will play in first and second. Okay. So this is this was the information about FIDE Grand Prix. Last information is about the Republic Day sale on Chessbase India, where you can get uh, Vedika's chocolates three buy three get one free, and if you buy two T-shirts of Chessbase India, you get one free. So these are two. Uh, two offers in this period that are going on so and you can check out the links in the description you will find links to first link is chessbase 16 and mega database you keep seeing this window which i keep showing you and analyzing this is chessbase 16 and mega database uh, and also if you would like you can get a chess set it's the second link in the description and the third link is our favorite chocolate here vedika's chocolates with three flavors in the description so please do check them out whenever you get time also i have put in the description about help chess foundation so there if anyone wants to contribute uh, it is an atg recognized foundation you can check there's upi and you can contribute so and then write to us at chessbase gmail if you want to be in touch and contribute so that is all for now guys uh, i hope you had a good time following this uh, just i mentioned it on last stream amruta and i uh, do not have the best of health but this moment of like couple of hours of commentary is very exciting for me to be with all of you to look at chess games to ask you questions you answering i hope you also find it beneficial uh, if you like it if you enjoyed it please like the stream do subscribe to chessbase india leave a comment if you enjoyed it until then guys take care bye bye see you